I'm going to show you how to use staplet.com to calculate binomial probabilities and visualize the probability distribution function. So we'll start off going to binomial distributions. We see here that we have two options, n and p. n is a fixed number of trials or the number of times the probability experiment is repeated. Let's say we flip a coin 10 times. Then our n is 10 and our p is 50%. P is the probability of success. Flipping a coin, there's one heads, for example, out of two sides. So we would want to define what our success is. In this case, I'm going to use flipping heads as a success. So this is the number of times heads is flipped on the x-axis. What we see is the probability distribution or the probability of each individual outcome. Flipping 0 out of 10, 1 out of 10, 2 out of 10, all the way up to 10 out of 10. If we want to pool these probabilities, we can find some of those options below. For example, I would change exactly to at most. Let's say I want to find the probability of getting somewhere between 0 and 4. That would be at most 4 successes. We could also just say between 0 and 4 inclusive, and that would give us the same thing. It might be easier to use the second option and just pick a left side and a right side. We may have issues if we try to go outside of the boundaries. Here it's saying I need to have a number between 0 and 10, so I need to go from 0 to n at all times. The limitations of Staplet is that you can't use it for fractions. Let's say I'm rolling a six-sided die 10 times and I want to find the probability of rolling a 3 or the number of times I roll a 3. Well, there's only one 3 out of 6 sides, and I can't use a division sign here, so I'd have to do 0.1667. At some point, I would have to round that. That's going to be an issue for uh, precision of some of these probabilities, but if you only need a couple decimal places, it's still going to work. Lastly, you can see the mean and standard deviation down here. Um, if we have a uh, sufficiently large enough sample size, or if this is um, more centered to where it's not really skewed or cut off on one end, then that will kind of follow a normal curve. We see here it's a little too truncated on the left side. Um, if we increase the number of um, trials, let's say to 25, um, we might be able to center that out more, and eventually at a certain point, um, usually around 50, um, for any P, you're going to get a pretty normal looking curve, and you're going to find that the mean and standard deviation uh, predict the behavior pretty well.